Moving now to leaders' um, questions, which this evening will be taken by uh, the, um, the, the deputy leader. Councillor Cook, I haven't forgotten your name. Uh, question number one, Councillor Hogg. Uh, question one to the deputy leader. I thank uh, Councillor Hogg for, for the question. And may I just say what a, what a pleasure it is to be facing Councillor Hogg. I'm reliably informed there may be some management changes uh, coming down the track in the party opposite, so we'd better make the most of, uh, of this evening. Um, uh, turning to this, uh, this question, uh, it's really rather... It's very reliably. I, my sources are impeccable. The, 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 uh, uh, I, my sources could not be better. Turning to this question, it really is, it really is rather disappointing. Uh, as, the, as the first paragraph sets out, it's as long ago as the 17th of July, the Secretary of State, uh, uh, of course, uh, our own MP for Putney, uh, informed Parliament of the uplift in funding, uh, which added to the four billion, brings it very, very close to what London councils uh, asserted was needed by London schools. Uh, and, um, and, that that is, and there is further commitment of, of, uh, of a 0.5% increase per pupil over the next two years. Um, and so it's really, uh, and, and it wouldn't have been difficult to find that out, not only was it a statement in Parliament, but our own paper, 17308, um, had the, uh, the, uh, the letters uh, attached to it from our own cabinet members lobbying very clearly, very, uh, very effectively, obviously, uh, for that measure. So, I mean, it really is disappointing. That has not been hauled on board. That's been out in the public domain for a long time. And the biggest disappointment, of course, which many of us will have seen, uh, is the way that ignoring those facts uh, has been... Uh, a, a, has been used to cause really significant alarm amongst parents across the borough and spread rumours uh, for which there is no basis uh, about reductions uh, in, uh, in teaching staff across the borough. Uh, and that is particularly unfortunate because it also denigrates our schools and their generally absolutely excellent uh, budgetary management uh, performance. Uh, supplementary, Mr Mayor. Councillor. Um, well, I'm afraid to say the Deputy Leader appears complacent on this issue. I mean, we know from talking to parents at school gates across the borough that this is of concern, and I'd encourage him to have those conversations and to take real action. Uh, I can assure him I have read the papers referenced in the answer, and the figures quoted do take into account the partial U-turn in July, um, brought about by parent power, not least through concerned parents here in Wandsworth. I mean, he's right. Naturally, some schools won't want to draw attention to their declining budgets because they fear you know, <laughs> that, that might damage their reputations. But research by Councillor Ambash has uncovered the true impact of Tory cuts on our schools and their staffing. A Wandsworth secondary school is not replacing 10 teachers and five teaching assistants. A primary school is not replacing four teachers. Science and technology equipment cut back. Reductions in the provi provision of arts, music and drama. After school and preschool provision has been cut back and parents have been asked for additional financial contributions. Does he recognise this picture? If not, will he commit to get out of the town hall, listen to local people, and take real action? Uh, well, accusations of complacency are the oldest, uh, oldest trick in the book from politicians, aren't they? Uh, we're not in any way complacent. Uh, uh, we've been extremely successful in lobbying the Secretary of State. Now, I don't recognise those figures. Uh, we all know that in, with the very large number of schools that we have in this borough, there can be all manner of reasons why uh, staffing uh, numbers will fluctuate both up and down. And that's perfectly legitimate and perfectly to be expected. Uh, I think it's very, very irresponsible to be spreading the rumours uh, which haven't got a basis in fact. It has caused alarm. There have been a lot, lot of letters, conversely to what uh, you said, Councillor Hogg, uh, to uh, the education department, which we've had to deal with, uh, and put them right. And also a lot of annoyed head teachers who, uh, who don't appreciate the rumours being spread. Um, I, would make one final, I would make one final point that, of course, these increases in funding um, also allow um, increases in minimum wage, uh, pension contributions, and all manner of other income streams, which will be of great benefit to the staff in the schools. So that's something worth reflecting on too. Second supplementary, Mr Mayor. Councillor Gravelli. Uh, can the Deputy Leader cast his mind back to February of this year, uh, when it was suggested by a number of people, including the Mayor of London, that as a result of the proposed new schools funding formula, 
70 per cent of schools in the capital would see their budgets cut with a loss of about half a billion pounds for London schools, about 17 million per borough. With the school's budget nationally set to increase to a record 43.5 billion, does he agree that instead we now welcome a cash increase funding for Wandsworth schools and in the words of the Institute for Fiscal Studies, school funding reform is moving in the right direction? I thank my, my colleague for, for that question. I wholeheartedly agree, and I think that is very much the true picture, and we should welcome it, that it's a very, very positive picture. For years, schools have had a very high degree of protection compared with other public bodies, and we're now me moving into a new era, which, as, as, uh, as Councillor Cavelli says, is very positive. So, so yes, I wholeheartedly uh, agree with that, and that is what we should all be communicating to parents uh, in this borough. Question two, Councillor Hogg. Question two to the Deputy Leader. Well, I thank uh, Councillor Hogg for this uh, question on this in incredibly important subject, and uh, I, I doubt there's, uh, there's probably anything as important that we'll uh, deal, with, deal with this evening. Um, the, um, as, as the answer says, uh, the, the, uh, the statement about, um, about uh, general uh, about the, the definition of whether this is a, a necessary measure or just a nice to have. Um, our view is, is very, very clear that this is absolutely essential. Uh, we take the, uh, take the advice of the London Fire Brigade very seriously. Uh, and in particular, they're saying this isn't just one measure, it's one of a whole suite of measures. And I, I think probably one of the most important factors to bear in mind here is that we should see it in the context of uh, new buildings that are going up uh, of any height. Uh, this is an absolutely mandatory requirement in terms of building controls. And so, so the question is, why should uh, any older building have a lesser standard of safety? And of course, as we, we can all see now, the tragedy at Grenfell has, has changed everything. Uh, we all now look back on that and think, well, of course they shouldn't. The standards of safety should be absolutely the same. Um, it's, as the answer goes on to say, uh, there's, there's no bearing on the chargeability um, of such works. Uh, that was very cl clearly laid out how that would happen at the, the recent uh, OSE. And the process around that is very largely determined by, uh, by the regulations. It, it's, uh, it's clear that we do have to go through a process there and we don't have, we don't have room for manoeuvre. Um, I, I have to say I was, I was uh, pleased, that, as, as it should be, uh, Councillor Hogg and his colleagues um, wholeheartedly supported those measures at OSC. Uh, it's, it's really not something that should become a political matter. Uh, and that, that was very much to be, to be welcomed. Um, and finally, uh, the, the costs of the works um, will fall to the housing revenue account. That is clear. That is a matter of fact. Um, I thank the Deputy Leader and, and of course agree with him that our response to the Grenfell disaster is going to be a key issue for the Council. Uh, we will be judged on our response, a response that should be swift but it should be considered. Um, and I'd just like to briefly pay tribute to work of people from all parties, particularly Councillor Heaster, uh, Councillor Grimston, and I think Councillor White um, particularly stand out. And um, I'd just like to say a few words about our position because it is slightly frustrating uh, when the administration uses their sort of bully pulpit, whether here in the council or, or through the press office, to just uh, tell us what our position is or what we said. Um, we haven't been inaccurate on school figures. We've released all the data behind all the claims that we've made. We did not give our wholehearted uh, support for, for every element of this programme, and it's a very serious issue, and it's, it's just not worth making those claims when we're here to actually be able to state our position for ourselves. So I'll say a few words about that. I mean, we remain committed to recladding the affected blocks, to offering fire safety improvements, including, of course, sprinklers to all those residents in need of them. And we are being guided by the close support of the fire service. But we did lay amendments in committee, three amendments that related to consultation, the Grenfell inquiry and the priority order that blocks receive sprinklers. Councillor, may I ask you to come to the question? Um, actually, Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd ask you to reconsider that one. I, I don't know if the Chief Executive has been in your ear, because I do feel I've been misrepresented on one of the most serious issues of policy that faces this Council. It's a, it's, it's a question of semantics. Put it as a question. Um, well, to, to raise a related question, um, do, does the Deputy Leader accept that some of the disquiet the residents have about paying for these sprinklers is related to uh, high leasehold costs they've received recently, for instance, on the Surrey Lane estate. They've just been asked to pay £9,000 over the next 10 months. 
Um, does he accept that these sort of large unpredictable charges are a burden and will he investigate um, the use of a sinking fund arrangement to remove these unwelcome shocks from the current system? Well, I thank uh, Councillor Hogg for his uh, <laughs> extended question. It seemed to be a little mixed up at the beginning, if I may say so. Um, the, I think the position is very clear and is indeed, as, as laid out here, uh, there are things that we are obliged to do. As regarding uh, leaseholders, we can't, we can't exempt them. Uh, it's a very important matter of principle that uh, if we're going to do this, then coverage of entire blocks is critically important. Uh, so there can't be any exemptions. Uh, for the many, not the few, might be how some people might, uh, might describe it. Uh, and we, of course, as, as, as the question makes clear, we, of course, will we'll take a, a sympathetic view to uh, people's financial circumstances and there are arrangements already of uh, interest-free payments. But, uh, but it is also laid down in statute that um, how, how the payments must be handled and that, that has to be the case. It's the only reasonable way. Uh, were it to be otherwise, uh, we would be in the very strange position of, um, of, the, of uh, other non-leaseholders effectively subsidising uh, anyone who was uh, given a concession, which clearly could not be right. Councillor Grimston. Thank you, Secretary Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Um, is Councillor Cook aware, first, that there are at least two blocks in my ward where the leaseholders are now coming together with a serious view to buying the freehold of the blocks, because that's the only way they can defend themselves against the Council on this particular issue. Uh, as you're aware, this is a big step, and of course there are other blocks in the borough where there are not enough leaseholders to do that. There is sufficient uh, in this particular case. Is he further aware that if he lives in a house, he is more likely to die from a fire than anybody who lives in a templar story block, according to the current uh, statistics, which go back for several years? And indeed, we have never been safer from fires in, in houses, uh, in any sort of property, now than we have at any point in the previous 30 years. And you say to him, as a householder, does he have sprinklers in every room in his house? And if not, would he be entirely comfortable with the government knocking on his door saying, we're going to come into your house, we're going to install sprinklers at a cost of three to four thousand pounds? And what is more, if you had had previous bills uh, in these two blocks I'm talking about, they're just paying for work where in at least three cases the leaseholders have finished the work for themselves because it was so badly done. In a borough where we have at the moment, certainly in my ward, a very poor reputation for delivering uh, major works in our housing estates at a reasonable cost and to a reasonable standard. I thank uh, Councillor Grimston for that question, which, uh, frankly, I find astonishing. Uh, I've heard several uh, reports from the recent Housing Committee, and they were all consistent in their consternation uh, at, uh, at your challenge, um, which nobody else supported. Um, on this issue at, uh, at uh, the recent uh, housing uh, OSC. Uh, I'm very surprised you've raised it again. Um, the point about the... I do live in a house. Um, standard Victorian terrace is probably the most common uh, form of housing uh, in, in the borough. And as anyone can see, it is vastly different from Grenfell Tower. And that is the whole point. Uh, you're a very clever man, Councillor Grimston. We heard you often on the radio, but there are times when statistical analysis departs from obvious common sense, and we can all see that the whole point of this issue is the danger that flows from tall buildings, the situations that can develop very, very quickly, catastrophically in the case of Grenfell, not yet fully understood, that will, that will emerge in coming months, uh, and that is reacting to that new situation, which is what we have done. So we are not talking about Victorian terraced houses, and to make that analogy is frankly ridiculous and very, very insensitive. Uh, question three, Councillor O'Brien. Question number three to the uh, Deputy Leader, please. I, th I thank Councillor O'Brien for this, this, this question. It's a very unusual situation, isn't it? Um, well, I, I, I don't know what the, uh, what the local MP was, was told about. Uh, um, uh, Lavender Hill Police Station is, of course, my ward, so I'd, I'd be very interested. I would be, I'd be very, very keen to hear from uh, uh, our new MP uh, what she has been told by MOPAC, because um, what I know, and that is based on the consultation documents that MOPAC have issued, uh, really doesn't uh, inspire a whole lot of confidence. Um, uh, as the answer here says, I don't think they have really got any idea of what the alternative sites uh, may be. 
Uh, I don't think they're being very realistic. So they've raised the question, but they haven't got an answer for it. So that's caused a lot of disquiet uh, locally. As for it not being fit for purpose, well, uh, one wonders about that. And um, really, the whole uh, exchange of information has been very, very poor indeed. Uh, the implications of what's being planned are huge, not just for this, uh, not just for this police station, but all of the other physical, physical police uh, um, assets across the borough and uh, I think it's, it's really uh, a very poor performance by Mopac. There's been no financial case made and we really need to know, know an awful lot more but Lavender Hill Police Station really does stand out as a very, very poor proposition. Supplementary please. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. Uh, having read the letter of, of the MP, um, Councillor, do you share my concern that this term fitness for purpose, which implies a kind of objective standard being applied to the assessment, is instead an excuse to put through what appears to be a done deal and share my concern that our newly elected MP in Battersea seems to be accepting and acquiescing to the closure of that police station on Lavender Hill. Sorry, Councillor, can you put your mic on? Sorry, Mr. Uh, did everyone hear me? Um, without any regard for local situation, and, and Lavender Hill Police Station is just the perfect example, uh, there's been no thought that I can see any evidence of uh, for how this is going to work. So, so yes, I think, I think Councillor Abirin's hit it exactly the nail on the head. The feeling I get from this is something they're determined to ram through, they're determined to do the same thing in every borough, and not surprisingly, it's upsetting an awful lot of people right the way across London. Second supplemental, if I may. Yes. Thank you. Um, Councillor, would you therefore, given your response, and thank you for that, would you... Nobody else... Nobody else stood. Councillor, while I'm standing and taking the opportunity... I didn't uh, notice I, you, I, I Councillor. Second, 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 second supplementary. You did not stand. I did not notice you. I can't... I, a button. Well, we can all press buttons. The whole point is we have to ask. But may I proceed, Mr Mayor? Thank you for your indulgence. Um, thank you. Ca Councillor, thank you for your response. In, in response, would you, be, would you be prepared, please, to ask given your previous answer, MOPAC, for further details as to the criteria it's going to apply to the assessment of Lavender Hill Police Station and its prospective closure. Uh, well, the short answer to that, uh, that question, for which, for which I, I thank my colleague, is, is yes. Um, uh, we've already started uh, those discussions and been pressing for more information. What, what are the criteria? Uh, and, and what do they have in mind? What are they going to do next? Uh, there is no information. It really is just not good enough. It's causing a lot of alarm. Question, Question four James. to the Deputy Leader. Yes, please. Oh, I do thank Councillor Jones for this question. I, I must admit I smiled when I read this because I, I must say I don't, uh, didn't really get the impression that Councillor Jones was one of life's listeners. Uh, so there's a certain, a certain irony here. Um, there are several factual inaccuracies, a um, couple of which I will come to, which are in the question, uh, but also rather amusingly, I, I think, uh, well, I, ho I hope this, uh, this question hasn't been read in Westminster because uh, I'm sure the residents of St James's Square will be rather alarmed to see that uh, Chatham House is about to be redeveloped uh, as, uh, as the new Northcote Library. Um, there are really, uh, I think you meant Chatham Hall, and I did check, that is what you put in. Um, there are two issues here. They are slightly different, and uh, it's rather desperate of you, I think, to try and join them together. Um, we carried out a consultation with Chestnut Avenue. Uh, it was essentially a very simple proposition. Do we have a managed decline, or do we take a deep breath and remove and replace simultaneously? Uh, and we got a very clear response from the consultation, a consultation that was praised by the independent Tooting Mac. They said it was fair, all the information was on the table, we get it. Um, and a very high proportion of people said, yes, we're happy that you've told us all we need to know, we can reach a conclusion. 
So I don't think there was any uh, particular problem with that consultation. Uh, there is a mention, I, I cannot let this go, there is a mention here of a petition of 6,500 6, residents. I've looked at that petition. It was framed in, frankly, a very misleading way. There was no mention, of, just for one example, there was no mention of the fact that the trees will be replaced. Uh, and there is absolutely no way of knowing, unlike our own consultation, no way of knowing where those 6,500 people come from. So sure, some of them will have been from this borough, some of them will have been from Tooting, maybe quite a few, but some of them could have been from Tasmania, we just don't know. Um, as for Northcote Library, I'm amazed that, um, that this is being joined in together. Um, I can understand why, I'll come to that in a second. Um, it's the other factual inaccuracy in the question is, I mean, it really is beyond me how to say a majority of respondents to the Northcote Road Library consultation objected. Sure, there were people who were objected and very well aware of that, but there could hardly have been a clearer majority from memory, 79% for the library redevelopment and 82% in favour uh, for the Chatham Hall uh, redevelopment. Uh, it's pretty, I'm not, I'm not aware in my time as a councillor of a consultation which has come back with such stunningly high figures of support. Sure, some people didn't like it, but there are, you're never going to get 100%. That's as close to 100% as I think we've, we have ever got. Um, but I think the real reason why we keep hearing so much from the party opposite about Northcote uh, Library is they just cannot bear the fact that we're refurbishing and rebuilding libraries when what they do when they control councils is they close them. And you just have to look at Lambeth, where I think at the moment the score is three, and it's utter chaos. The contrast with the way we manage our libraries could not be greater, and I think that is what eats you, and that's why you've raised this question. Second supplementary. Uh, thank you for your answer. It's interesting to hear the stories that you tell yourselves. Um, you'll be aware that this week, because you were there, there was a very fractious and at times angry public meeting where indeed your colleague Guy Senior shouted at the residents in Shaftesbury Ward. Um, and the residents there gave the very clear message, which I'm kind of passing on to you, uh, call it a helping hand, that they don't feel properly consulted or listened to. You were there, you heard them say that. So my question is, did you hear the concerns of your residents? And if you did, what is it that you're doing to address them? Uh, well, I'm very, very surprised that uh, Councillor Jones wants to, wants to raise this. I'm very happy to talk about this and share with all of my colleagues just a little bit more about what happened at uh, what was a very fractious meeting, as uh, some WAG has uh, dubbed it the Let's Shout meeting. Um, uh, it was bad-tempered. And it was pretty immediately apparent that it was bad-tempered because a lot of people had shown up, not from Shaftesbury Ward, um, to heckle probably me more than anybody else uh, about a certain row of trees, which of course is in Tooting. Uh, so as uh, some of the Shaftesbury residents pointed out, uh, and they were asking, are you from here? And I could hear people saying, well, no, we're from Tooting, but we're here to talk. Uh, uh, it took about half an hour, that lady took about half an hour to come up with that answer and I think her initial answer was no when she was previously asked. Anyway, it was perfectly obvious because I've checked out quite a few of the people who were there and they are from Tooting. Um, and that was their, their main, so that was, that was Chesham Avenue. And there were some very uh, agitated people about Northcote Library, which again was quite bizarre. They tried to make, uh, about three or four I would estimate, um, tried to make the connection that Lots of people from Shaftesbury go to Northcote Library, which I would doubt since the excellent Lavender Hill Library uh, is, uh, is between the two and anyone wanting a library service has got the magnificent Lavender Hill Library uh, before they get to Northcote. But maybe daily routines for some people in Shaftesbury does indeed take them to Northcote. Um, so we're talking about low single figures. There was one lady who was clearly very agitated. Uh, I've seen her before. Fair enough. That's her right to comment. She is undoubtedly in the 18% of people who weren't overly impressed by the Northcote Library proposals. Uh, and there was another gentleman who I'm familiar with um, who uh, got also very agitated and kept shouting at me that I was a liar, which I just didn't even reply to because it seemed me, to me to be ridiculous. He didn't substantiate his claims in any way. So uh, I recognise exactly what Councillor Jones is describing. I thought it was quite bizarre that both matters should be raised in a Shaftesbury uh, Let's Talk meeting, and I don't think they're in any way representative uh, or inconsistent with anything that I've said. Those people clearly were against the things they were against, and they are amongst the objectors. Easy to understand. Second supplementary. Second supplementary. Yes, 
Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I mean, as a councillor in Northcote Ward, um, I have to say I think it's very clear that the views of residents regarding the new proposals for the library and the new community hall have actually been listened to and acted upon. Um, and I would, would like you to perhaps um, demonstrate this, um, Mr. Deputy Leader, by uh, outlining what changes were actually made to those proposals as a direct result of, um, of this consultation. Thank you. Uh, I thank the Councillor for, for the, the supplementary question. Very pleased to do that because I've taken a very close interest in uh, the library proposal. Obviously, it's in my, uh, my portfolio. I spent a lot of time on it and, in particular, responding to those concerns. Uh, so, a not exhaustive list, exhaustive list uh, things that we, we have changed really quite fundamentally and at considerable cost and potentially risk to the Council. Uh, we've taken a number of housing units uh, off the proposals and the effect of that is to, and, and to uh, propose that the Council should be the developer, so not to uh, put it out to a private developer. So, uh, the implications of that are to take the risk onto the Council. Um, to have fewer, fewer um, affordable homes, which some may feel is, 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 is not necessarily uh, a good thing. Uh, there have been changes to the design so that those closest to the library are less affected by it, uh, less, less impact, uh, particularly on their light uh, and overlooking, uh, and changes to the access arrangements as well, which I know was uh, a particular concern uh, the, the estate immediately adjacent, uh, and the various other measures, and, and we can continue. Um, it was a very thorough consultation, um, and there's an awful lot of very useful feedback that we got from residents. So we will do our utmost to include as much as we possibly can. And I would say it's an example of a, a very effective consultation. We've taken on board uh, what we've heard and where we possibly can. We've taken it into account. We'll continue to do so. Time for questions now being over.